Hello guys, it's me. Today we will work on database connection pooling in Golang. It's lesson, lesson six and give us thumb up. Subscribe our channel if you are not subscriber yet so you will be updated about the next episodes and turn on notifications so you will see immediately if we have next lessons of the courses. Hi guys! Today we will be working on refactoring our code and applying DB connection pool. So we will not need to connect with database every time. We will be able to connect the database once and next just take the connection object into the rest of the functions. It will help a lot about performance, so we will not have the problem with database performance because before, if we are like connection, uh, creating connection and killing connection, it would, could kill our database. But now we will avoid that problem. Are you happy? Let's start. I would forgot. We will do the transactions history as well, but it will be smaller and less exciting than database connection pool. So let's start. As the first step, we need to create package database. So I already had the directory, now we need to create the file database.go and here we can define the package. Now we need to declare the global variable db that we will use later for accessing our connection object. In this step, we will need to create the function init database that will create connection with our database. Here we can take the logic from helpers because it will be almost the same. And copy and paste it here. Just instead of returning database, we will assign our object connection into the global DB. As the next step, we should create connection pool that will let database know how many connections can be done in the one moment. So we will not kill the database with every connection, with every function call. Now we need to initialize the database connection inside the main.go. So always if we'll start application, connection with database will be initialized. And here we should delete the connectdb from helpers.go because we will not use it anymore. Now we need go to the few functions and change the method how we use database. So we need to start using the, con uh, the database connection pool instead of calling always helpers.connectdb and closing db. You need to remember to always delete this defer db close from that functions because if we close the database you will not be able to use the connection object anymore. Now we can focus on refactoring migrate because in the previous episode we created a new function migrate transaction. Now we will not need it anymore. We will put everything into the one function migrate. And this function can be successfully deleted. Now we can go into transactions.go and do the same with refactoring. After that, if we refactor transactions, we will go into the user accounts.go 
and we will need to refactor again. It will be one more place when we will need to refactor and it will be users.go. Always remember to delete db clause. And this is the last place where we will need to refactor. Now we can go into the transactions and the first step that we need to do is to create the Staract response transaction that we will use later to pass the types into. If we have already interface, we can go into transactions.go and create the first function get transa transactions by account. It will be really similar to get user by ID. We will pass ID and we will uh, return array of transactions. First of all, we need to create the variable transactions that will be the array of response transactions and next we need to look inside the database table transactions for the object that has the from or to tab uh, column equal to our id account id because transactions can go from our account or can come into our account here we need to use transactions dot from and transactions dot to otherwise uh, otherwise the database will return as the podcast syntax error it will be the same when we will use where. We could use just string, but here we need to use interface, transaction, and inside use the like ob uh, from as a object prop. With or we will do the same. Okay, back it's fixed. And now we can scan it and pull it in the transactions. And just we need to return that array. The next function and last in this episode, in this transactions.go file, uh, is get my transactions. It's the function that will take our user ID will verify if our user ID is the same as it's encoded in the JVD token. If yes, we'll start looking for all the bank accounts that belong to us. And next, we'll start looking for all of the transactions that are related to one of our bank accounts. Let's take a look how I created that. This is kind of standard procedure with uh, token verification, so in every place it's almost the same. Here we have the area accounts. Next we look for data accounts.
And here we need to create for loop that will iterate through our accounts and next start looking for transactions related to that account. We could use maybe another loop, but I'm a big fan of for loops because they are stupid simple and in most of programming languages for loop is the fastest loop. Not all, in some cases with any like math uh, operations in some languages like Python or Julia, probably you can find another iteration method that are faster, but for most use cases for loop will be the best solution. Next we need to create the response and return that. Ok, with transactions we are done. And now we need to create function to handle the API endpoint. It will be almost the same as function get user. And the last step of coding is to handle that endpoint in a router. It looks fine. Now we can go into testing. It looks like application works. We need to log in as a Martin. We need to take the JVT token. We can see Martin's user ID one. Next, we need to paste the token and test it. It looks like everything works. You have transactions for your user, so I can tell you congratulations. Now you know how to do database connection pool. I'm super excited because your application is maybe not production ready yet, but after a few episodes, for sure it will be. But what is the most important, you learn knowledge, it's much better now. And you know how we can save a lot of time. And the next episode, we will go into something equally important because I will show you how much time we could save by using the associates and SQL relations. Now we created some functions that we could avoid to create and you will see how good planning of the project on the beginning of the project can save you a lot of time and give you much better code. Are you waiting for that? Because I do and I'm super excited when I only think I will show you all of these things and your Golang skills will be much better. So, give us a thumb up. Uh, if you are not subscriber yet, for sure you need to do it so you will know about new episodes and turn on notifications so you will, maybe you will know about the next episode as the first person and you will be the fastest one guy who will learn the new lesson. And thanks for watching and see you in the next episode. Bye! Thank you.